Hello everybody, I don't think it's much of a stretch for me to say that Honda have created some great hot hatches. If anything, some may argue they've created some of THE greatest hot hatches. However, I think it is pretty fair to say also that many would fail to believe their finest ever could come from their least loved, the Civic Type R FN2. But if some are to be believed, this Mugen version really could be that. Before I tell you about what this car actually is and whether it's any good, I want to tell you a little bit about the amazing story of how it came to be in its current owner's possession. This was brought to me by a young man called Matt. However, it doesn't belong to him. It is in fact his mother's, a lovely lady called Audrey, and she bought this car on the advice of her father, who was at the time 80 years old, a lovely man called Douglas Walker. He was the sort of chap who, by all accounts, though he had no formal engineering qualifications, couldn't resist helping anyone and everyone in the village with all of their mechanical problems, and was, I'm told, a lovely, lovely chap. He saw an advertisement for the new Honda Civic Type R Mugen in a magazine one day. There was at the time a small incentive saying if you gave a thousand pounds as a deposit, Honda would match that as a contribution. So he told his daughter, you must buy this car. You'll enjoy it. You'll love it. They've done all sorts of different things with the valve train. It will be amazing. Audrey told me with pride that it was her father who instilled in her a passion for cars from a very young age. She took her driving lessons in a 1953 Rover 75. And she also spent many hours as a young lady hanging off a ramp, helping her father out with his many different mechanical quests. So then, what actually is it that I'm driving today? This is a Honda Civic Type R Mugen. But the first thing I should really tell you is what this car isn't. It is not a modified Civic Type R. This is how this car was delivered from new. One of the easiest ways to tell this isn't a regular Civic Type R is the fact that it's white. Only the limited edition Championship white and Mugen versions ever came in this shade. It is also not, and this is where things do get a little confusing, the other Civic Type R Mugen based on the same body shell, which had a much longer production run and was considerably cheaper. This car was born out of a concept, also confusingly called the Civic Type R Mugen. I can tell you it was the brainchild of Honda UK. They decided they wanted a way of spicing up the Civic Type R, which, let's be honest, hadn't really been particularly well received. On Top Gear, it received great criticism for being essentially slower than the old one, and many others felt very much the same way. The EP3, after all, was essentially an instant classic, loved for its practicality, its distinctive styling, and its Banzai engine. This had exactly the same engine, but made only one horsepower more in a car that weighed quite a bit more, and tragically for Honda fans, ditched the independent double wishbone rear suspension for a torsion beam setup. The logic being, this gave you a lot more space. Now for your cooking version of the Civic Type R, that is an understandable compromise. However, for a Type R, that's downright disastrous. After all, one of the reasons LJK Setright, one of the most famous of the automotive writers before the YouTube age, loved Honda was because of their adherence to double wishbone suspension. This doesn't have any double wishbones on any corners. Up front, you've got McPherson struts. A far cry from the Civics of the 1990s. Regardless, I must confess to having a fondness for this generation of Civic Type R. My girlfriend of the time had one in deep sapphire blue, a very rare colour, the rarest, I believe, of the regular offerings. Though in Honda tradition, you had to rev the heck out of it to get it to go anywhere, and even then, it wasn't particularly fast, it was enjoyable, if overly stiff, and it was ludicrously practical. It was a much-loved member of the family, and a car I've still got a soft spot for today. The Mugen appeared first as a concept, but is essentially very close to what they actually produced. The formula for it was very simple. They did a lot of work to the engine. It had new intake, 
new exhaust, new cams, new pistons, and a remap, and that took power from 198 horses to 237. That's a 20% gain, and in the world of natural aspiration, that's never something you can get easily. Torque was still a relatively modest 157 pound-feet, that's about 212 newton meters, which is a 15 pound-foot increase over standard. The car was also lightened, receiving lightweight alloy wheels. The concept had composite body panels too, but I'm not sure those made it to production. The six-speed gearbox, already one of the best pieces of the regular car, was somehow made even slicker, and these were produced in very, very limited quantities. Only 20 were to be available, yet they could only find a home initially for 16 of them, and that may have something to do with the price. The regular Type R was £21,000, which back then was a pretty good price for a hot hatch. However, the Mugen was 38599 close to double. So, is it worth it? something I think it just might be there is a real magic about this car granted at a quick glance it doesn't seem to be anything more than a regular Civic Type R with a different bumper and a big wing at the back and some alloy wheels that being said none of those things are there for show the wheels as mentioned are lighter and all of the tweaks to the body were tested in a wind tunnel to make sure they were more than simply cosmetic even the purchase process of this car was allegedly going to be a bit of a skunkworks affair because if you were one of the few people willing to stump up near 40,000 quid for a Civic, you would be invited to go and meet Mugen and discuss exactly how you wanted your car set up. You could have this if you were particularly extreme as a two-seater. Audrey actually wanted this as a five-seater, but they refused to do it, saying it would ruin the balance of the car. So this is a four-seater. You could also get them with a little gate pod which looks very very nasty boy racer aftermarket thankfully she didn't have that installed either if reports of the time are to be believed they could even map the car to your specific requirements as well that's pretty amazing attention to detail and I can't help but wonder how many of these are actually still in the possession of their original owners there can't be many it turns out that wasn't just marketing gump either. I'm told Mugen were very helpful when it came to the setup of the car, and even provide a special handbook for it. Inside this beautiful leather-bound book, you'll find the specifications of the car, as well as pictures and a dinograph of your exact engine. This was car number three, and the first one to actually be collected in person from Mugen's then headquarters, which was shared with Cosworth. The other two were collected by a trailer. Naturally, for that kind of sum, the suspension was not left alone either. It is lower and you would fear stiffer. However, I've got to say, there is a real sophistication to this damping. It is not soft, I can tell you that much, but there does seem to be an added level of compliance to it that I do recall being missing from the standard car and certainly from some of the other modified versions I've driven. They are, I believe, Showa dampers, the name being familiar more to motorcycle people than car people, I'm sure, but they're a company that Honda owned, and they also supplied the dampers to the S2000. They know what they're doing, in other words. The brakes were also 20 millimeters larger, and I have to say, do their job very well indeed. The exhaust is certainly not going to be to all tastes. Once VTEC engages at about 5,500 to 6,000 RPM, it does become rather buzzy even in here. Outside, you hear the chorus of a million angry bees. To some, I'm sure that will be the ultimate exhaust note. To others, a reason to steer far away from this car. I think it suits it. Whoa! 
blooming heck. The throttle response is also like pretty much nothing else I've ever driven. Get the car into the VTEC zone and it is absolutely unreal. This I think has got to be one of my favourite small engines of all time. The last thing I remember having this much character and fizz about it was the fabled red top motor in the Vauxhall Astra GTE 16 valve. A strange comparison I'm sure to anybody who hasn't driven both. That little Astra lump is really something else. Helping get power to the ground originally was a set of very sticky Yokohamas and so equipped the Mugen Type R set a number of lap records in many magazines when compared to its hot hatch rivals. Unfortunately though many a journalist really fell for it, not many of them seemed to be convinced of this car's purchase price. This unfortunately seemed to be another one of those cars where everyone who drove it said yeah it's brilliant but don't buy it anyway, go and get something else. The joke, of course, being if you were savvy enough to get one of these when new, though yes, they would have cost you the thick end of 40 odd grand, now they're worth about 40 grand. The last time one of these came up for sale, it was, as far as I'm aware, the original Honda press car, which had about 30,000 miles on it. And bear in mind, journalist miles are like dog years. They're quite aggressive, but the car did have decent provenance. And that, I think, went up for sale for 45 grand. The regular production Mugen, which essentially replaced the championship white, was nowhere near as bespoke as this. It had the same engine as the regular Civic Type R, but it did gain the limited slip differential that you also find in here, which really does make a difference. Turning circle, incidentally, always tragic in these cars. You had the paintwork and you also got the body kit too. Beyond that, it wasn't really any different to a regular one. So please do not confuse the two if you're looking to buy, though I'm pretty convinced it's fairly hard to do. Out of VTEC, the throttle response in this thing is absolutely amazing, pin sharp, perhaps to a fault, but you know what? It does suit the character of the car. Rev matching, as you might imagine, a delight, and this gearbox, and this comes from an S2000 owner, this is one of the best out there. That rush for the red line is incredible. It was always one of my big issues with the regular car. You had to wait, 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 wait and then what you were given didn't really feel like it was worth all the waiting. In here, it does. Grip, even on these off-brand tyres, is excellent and traction is stupendous. You think the car's not getting through the bend, just stamp your foot down, it'll drag you around the corner and you're out. Weaknesses, the car certainly does have some. The steering, I would say, is better than in the regular Civic Type R, but it's still a bit of a weakness. It's fairly heavy, but ultimately doesn't talk to you all that much. It also torques steers like a devil. I mean, really very bad. And though in its day, if you were on a track, it would be very quick, now pretty much any hot hatch on sale will absolutely annihilate it. That though is the pace of progress and what all of the modern cars do not have is an engine that has anywhere near the character of this. It really is special. I'm sure plenty of people will pop into the comments and tell me that you can get 240 horsepower out of the regular car but you know there's just something about proper old school naturally aspirated tuning that a remap cannot and will not ever match. Also come resale time try and tell me a car's worth more because you've just run Honda to through it. Not going to happen. It is sized really nicely for this technical and tight Scottish road, which I've never driven before and actually I'm going to revisit. I'm quite enjoying it. In a larger car, some of the bigger supercars and things I drive, they would feel simply out of depth here, but this, just at home. It also, like the regular car, has excellent seats. I really, really like these. I did read somewhere that the Mugen got different ones to stand, but these feel and look like the regular items. The dash also, again, same as standard. There's a very clever two-tier layout, which in some ways feels very cool and space age, and in other ways, rather out of date.
it is doing that sort of stuff where you've really got to exercise caution because when you're giving it the beans in first, second and third, if you go over even the tiniest of undulations, you cross a white line on the road and it will try and drag the steering wheel out of your hand. That's rather disconcerting, you've got to be ready for it. It is a shame that beyond the optional and rather nasty looking gauges, Mugen didn't do anything to the interior, but I suppose they'd spent all their money elsewhere and in the places people really will appreciate it. That being said, I'm sure they could have done something in here to liven it up, but I'm not complaining, that's okay. And happily, this car retains one of the best features of the standard item, the stupendous amount of storage space. You put those back seats down and this thing is basically a van with VTEC. Wow. I swear, the harder you drive this thing, the better damped it becomes. I was really concerned this was going to be an example of a car with a fantastic engine, but a suspension that was simply unusable on our British roads. In fact, the opposite is true, that suspension really does let you use this engine to its full potential. It's fabulous. Not to all tastes. And if you want the ultimate in Civic Type R, this wasn't actually it. In the context of the Euro cars anyway, there was one more. Because Honda were determined to sell 20 of these things, and they'd said they were going to, the final four that were unsold were modified and turned into a 2.2 litre version of essentially the same thing. More power, even more money, and honestly, until I researched this, I didn't even know those existed. I'm sure they did sell them to some very, very hardcore Honda fans, but uh, I don't think I've ever seen one. If you happen to have one and you'd like to see it on the channel, please do drop me a line. Likewise, if you've got anything interesting, Honda related or otherwise, please do email me. My address is in the description of this and every other video. Now though, all that remains to be said is a massive thank you to Matthew for bringing his car out, to Audrey for buying it, and to Douglas for inspiring a new generation of petrol heads too. Thanks to you as ever for watching, don't forget to hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and even if you have, please make sure you've checked the bell icon, that way you'll be notified of every new video that I release. I shall see you all for the next one. Bye bye.